Welcome back to Everyday Economics, a podcast that helps you learn about the economic world happening around you every day. I'm your host, Chris Krug, president of the 501c3 nonprofit Franklin News Foundation. Everyday Economics is a production of America's Talking Network. You can check out all of our great podcasts at americastalking.com. To support Everyday Economics and podcasts such as this one, please make your tax-deductible charitable contribution to the Franklin News Foundation by clicking the link in the show description. We are recording this episode on Monday, January 30th, and joining me, as always, is my friend and the much-heralded PhD economist, Dr. Orfe Devangi. Dr. O, I'm going to bring up a subject that I think you will enjoy talking about because it's not macro and it's kind of micro, but it's sort of in between macro and micro where the re- like at a retail level of economics. Look, Chris, I'm going to say something here. There's no macro without micro. Ah, ooh, that's right. I'm just saying that this is kind of a sweet spot story opportunity for us to talk about. Wall Street Journal, Christopher Mims published this story over the weekend and you saw it. I saw it. We both liked it. And it was the decline of the nice to have economy. And wow, I thought this story was super timely because it's everything being done for us. The convenience driven economy goes into like these businesses that are out there that are just trying to simplify people's lives to the extent that they're doing things that people could be doing on their own. We've gotten really soft. I mean, the idea of like not leaving your house to buy a car. I mean, that's yeah, it's a really cool idea. And during COVID, that was probably really popular. Having your food mailed to you, and then you all you have to do is just heat it and eat it. Yeah, that's that's real. That's really really great. Are you saying low tech companies that do not really innovate? Is that what you're saying? I think there's innovation in the way that they're doing what they're doing, right? There, you know, I mean, we still need a car. We still need to eat. How I get that car and how I get this food and my clothes and things like that, where somebody's picking my clothes out for me and then sending me a box of what to wear. And I'm paying them, I don't know, 2X what it should cost or more to make that make sense somehow. I just think that these services that exist out there that have taken an interesting place in our economy, in particular in the last three years, amplified during COVID, they have problems. Yeah, they they do. They do. I mean, look, let's take it back a little bit to what's actually happening when you look at the whole economy. Look, inflation eased in December. Real disposable income moved up slightly and the savings rate moved up. And that means that with prices coming down and the labor market remaining quite strong, consumer purchasing power has actually increased. Consumers are getting a little breathing room to adjust to the new higher higher interest rate environment. And with that extra purchasing power, instead of going to continue to buy those things that they were buying last year, they're choosing to save. They're choosing to spend less. That's what we're seeing. And so, you know, who's affected? The nice to have economy. Yes. Yeah. I like that categorization. Not needs, wants, have these conversations with our kid. Is that something that you need? Or is that something that you want? Well, I mean, when you're arguing with a 10-year-old, I can tell you that they need everything because they want everything and they want everything that they want. And so moms and dads out there, I mean, if if you've figured out how to navigate through this to land at the um, home port of Reasonablenessville, send tips to Orfe and me because we're in the same boat that you're in. No, I really think that like one of the things that's been exposed in this economy, you know, what's going on with, with, you know, prices going up purchasing power going down, that these services, really the margins that used to be there, they're not there anymore. It looks really expensive to do business this way when somebody is intervening on my behalf to do this for me. Yeah. But consumers are clearly saying, look, consumers are choosing. They're choosing not to spend whatever increase in purchasing power they're finally getting, the, the little breathing room they're finally getting from inflation coming down. Those industries are seeing some severe weakening in consumer demand. Honestly, this is not new, Chris. This happens, usually happens in recessions. During recessions, consumer behavior changes. Consumers move away from the nice to have stuff. They kind of tighten up a little bit. They, they, they squeeze the belt a little bit and they try to get through that period, right? Uh, it's usually happened when consumer sentiment is falling. And we know consumer sentiment has been falling for a while now. It just happened to tick up a little bit in December, which is good news. 
uh, as inflation is coming down, consumer sentiment ticked up a little bit, which is great. But yeah, I think consumers are saying, look, we, we expect these interest, these high interest rates to stake, to stick around. We expect the cost of credit to continue to increase and stay high for a while. And they're shoring up their savings and they're saying, look, there's a lot of stuff that we could be doing. We don't have to have, uh, you know, the five subscriptions, TV subscriptions and the instant food delivery and, and the door dash and all that stuff. They're saying, look, we could cut back on a few things and survive this, you know, this kind of period of, of an economic slowdown. The risk of recession has increased. The fact that you see a lot of your friends losing their jobs, right? So if, if your neighbor is losing their job, you know, you start to kind of reassess a little bit and you also start to, even if you have a cushy job, you also start to kind of like sit back and say, hey, you know, maybe we need to curb our spending a little bit. I think this is the fear, right? Like going forward that maybe if everybody's bearish about the future, we could be talking ourselves into a recession. I don't think you're wrong about that. I mean, in the, the, the consumer sentiment, it really is the retail psychology in the American free market. You know, if we feel like we can, we can. If we feel like we can't, we can't. And then so this money that's going into, the, into our pockets, I think what you and I are talking about specifically around this story is these are some of the choices that consumers are making with regard to things that they have decided to do for themselves that in theory either simplified their lives or in some cases protected them from you know their fears of going outside during COVID. And these are coming to a halt. Carvana is a mess. That's been widely reported. The Wall Street Journal story also talks about Peloton, which is an, you know, an online exercise program that was built around a very expensive bike, Stitch Fix, which is a clothing company. There are others that are like it. We'll have to see whether these things are fads or if they can make it through. I think there's room for some of these companies, you know, but the question is, can they survive a downturn? Can we say, can they survive this correction? That's the big thing. And and we know that usually in these types of periods, these times, these slowdowns, when people start to worry because, you know, John down the road has lost his job and we now know two or three people who have lost their jobs then, you know, you start to worry and you start to kind of pull back, even if you still have a job, right? And so that's why I think a lot of people are starting to worry that the the job losses, the high profile job losses could actually lead to a massive slowdown in the services sector because people are worried and start to pull back because they're hearing about all of this risk of recession. You know, everywhere you turn the turn on the news, you hear negative economic data coming at you. And so, uh, so that could actually exacerbate the decline in economic activity. Appreciate the thoughts for Orfe Divangi. This has been Chris Krug. Subscribe to Everyday Economics and dozens of other quality podcasts at americastalking.com. <laughs>